Yes, I'm ready. So goal that we have set for or the goal of the Eastern Wisdom is we have been understanding it is an end of suffering. End of suffering. And Awakening to inner peace and happiness, love and wisdom, that is our goal. So how we go about it, we allow the intellect to change by the power of knowledge. Now when there is a change in behavior and attitude, we ask the mind to accept it. And when we accept, then what happens? You set an example around you, near you, in your relationships. So you keep on evolving. You are in peace. Other finds you that you are now a harmless, including your honey. So there is no chance of moving from soulmate to soulmate and the life becomes beautiful. That is basically the entire goal of the Eastern wisdom. And I have talked a lot about it, that we have 3,000 teachers in the text, and it is the knowledge. Now question comes, are you changing? So ask yourself, how many times how many situations, locations, people made you upset, anxious, scared, stressed and suffering? So that is the greatest way to check and understand whether we are changing or not. So if we are not changing, we are still carried away by the situation time, location, people, outside. We are constantly influenced by the world outside. It means we have yet to become a seeker. Right question is not that the others are responsible for my suffering. In Eastern wisdom they say, I have become blind to that situation, to that person, to that time, to that event, which is causing me the stress and suffering. Nobody else outside is responsible for our suffering. What is going to happen? You know, what is going to happen that one day the time comes, your mind will refuse to be miserable. No, I'm not. I'm not entering into any kind of a stress. That is one way to check that we have become the highest level of a seeker. And that is what we have been covering. Uh, couple of weeks about karma yoga. Right mental attitude and a state and that expresses the speech and the action in our relationship with people with the situation. So what do we find? You will find that you rise in awareness, a level of your awareness goes up and you will find it's not ego but you will find as if you are living above the social consciousness. You are not carried away by them. And that is settled completely in our mind. So we refuse to be miserable. We have already understood that the Karma Yoga results in heightened state of self-awareness dispassion, a sense of attachment and detachment, they are loosened in our mind. They don't create any problem. 
and a sense of delusion is gone. And once that sense of delusion is gone, you will find every situation, every condition is favorable in your life. Every situation, every condition. I don't know whether you have started feeling that or not. Why it happens? Why it happens? The knowledge is per settled in the intellect and it is constantly giving the feedback to the mind to express my speech, my action. In turn, I find the change in behavior and attitude in my life. So I ask you hardly twice a week or thrice a week, you have to ask every hour. How, why, how many times I get upset, I enter into conflict, I enter into anxiety. And never forget, listening and learning these principles, contemplation and reflection, results in detachment or dispassion. From the dispassion, the mind drops the delusion. The moment you drop the delusion, you will find the entire day the mind is not running, it is not wandering, it is not distracted. So that is what is known as the purity of the mind. But the mind does not leave the projection. And that is where last week we started understanding, uh, we want to understand that how to drop this projection. You see that we have an impression deeper inside the mind and now from that impression emotions are there and now that emotion triggers when I see someone so now it connects and it creates a different feeling and the projection is there. Did you get it? Let me say you that when you see your honey, you have a different set of emotion. When you see me, there is a different set of emotion. When you see your pet, there is a different emotion. When you look at your car, and then there is a different set of feeling, projection. So the mind is constantly projecting its feeling, its ideas, its notion over people, over honey, over the things. So that is why this mind is constantly distracted and it is wandering all the time. It has less to do with the impurity. It has more to do with, you know, we talk of the impurity of the mind. Uh, I'm not seeking anything. I'm not desiring anything. But still, the moment you see someone, it triggers a kind of a projection. What is that projection? Projection is nothing but a feeling. I should have this car. Why? Because it gives me peace and happiness. So the, the moment we have a projection, it results into the forgetfulness of the mind. So we live in this kind. This is also known as the wandering of the mind and the distraction of the mind. You know, many people say, you know, I cannot control my, my thoughts. Why should you control your thoughts? Mind is meant for thinking. You should have a right thinking. Are you getting it? What is the utility of a car? Now, my car, you know, always runs. You know, it will run when you drive. You should drive it rightly. 
no, 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 I have a lot of problems, you know, when I look at the opposite sex. So, do you want to become blind? Eyes are meant to see. You have to change that projection. Are you getting it? For that projection, the word that is used is upasana. Upasana. You know, science is not very clear, so I'm not talking too much of emotions and the feeling. We talk of emotions of sadness, anger, uh, surprise and excitement, but the feeling all, are all of our experiences that takes place in the mind. So you look at a person, the emotional reaction is there. So what I experience about that person is the feeling. And so here we say, that the mind keeps on projecting millions and millions of the things every moment. Unless these projections dissolve completely, we cannot enter into the higher state of mindfulness. Awakening does not take place. So we have three step strategy. Remove the impurities of the mind by karma yoga. And these are known as the emotional bondage, emotional dependence. So we should move from the emotional bondage to the emotional freedom by upasana. When you say he or she is my soulmate. You have excluded everyone. So what is the emotional freedom? You have the same set of higher emotion, free from the attachment and dependence all the time. And then you say, yes, he or she is my soulmate. But that soulmate Internally, the mind has a content of calmness, pure emotion of love, in the mode of self-giving, not in the mode of self-taking. It has nothing to do with the emotional dependence. It has nothing to do with the emotional bondage. The moment we have an emotional dependence, that is what is, causes a lot of projections. So that is why we need to work on our mind, the emotional content of the mind. We have this emotional bondage in millions of the things. Now I only eat this thing. If you only wear this dress, then only I will love you. You have been soulmate to me, but now you are a soulmate to me. You know, you see that that is how we express our uh, feeling and emotion. Now, if you look back almost maybe a thousand years, the human mind has not changed. They have the same set of emotions. They have the same set of feelings. They have the same set of projections. My dad, you know, for example, my dad never chose, I'm citing an example. My dad chose a soulmate, and then he became a sour mate, then he divorced, then he remarried. So what is the difference between his mind and my mind? I also think in the same way. I don't change. Do you see that? We don't change. Oh, you are a wonderful friend of mine and after a few months, that friendship is gone. Our emotion, emotional mind never changes. Do you see that? Just check it. It happens at home. It happens in our relationship. 
it happens in our profession it happens every moment we start thinking you know i do i hate that guy i'm not going to talk to that guy it is done enough is enough why don't you think about your mind why don't you ask your mind is not is it not enough and enough and enough is enough why you have been doing and behaving in the same way again and again are you getting it that is why we need to have this upasana that is why we are trying to understand uh, the true import of this upasana Ask another question in a different way so that we will understand why this upasana is very important. Do we want a situation, people, relation should cause stress and suffering to me? No, we don't want. We don't think and dream of it. We don't think and dream of a situation our relations, people in the time. We marry to be happy, but not not to be unhappy. We marry to we meet a person to be happy, not to be unhappy, but but in every situation it happens, it has a deeper bearing on our mind, emotional mind, if I use the word emotional. We eat for pleasure, but the pain returns. something hidden, something not known. <coughs> so our modern psychology says that these emotions are either consciously manifest or they remain at the unconscious level. Because they remain at the unconscious level, so the reaction, the emotional reaction of anger and the sadness they manifest and that destroys our life, our relationship, different situation. Well, it happened to me also in early days. And so what is the root cause is the emotional dependence, whether you say emotional dependence or you can say emotional bondage or we say that emotions trigger and it destroys the time a sense of excitement and a reaction and a blame and the complaint has those elements of emotion. Ask yourself another question. Okay, if they are definitely causing the emotional dependence and the problem from where they originate, it is from the animal mind. We carry forward the animal mind. No, animal mind, I told you that it is a chip. Uh, it is present in every animal, living species. They don't have an intellect. They don't have a choice of the, they don't have a choice. They cannot make a choice. They cannot observe. They cannot change. So the same animal mind is also present in us. So science says it is totally unconscious. It is difficult. You can manage your anger, but you cannot transcend your anger. You cannot transform. Ah, you can change your, ah, you have a sadness, you know, anger, sadness, fear. So we say that the moment we move from an emotional dependence to emotional freedom, how? Don't direct our emotion to anyone in the world at a particular time with a particular person, but let that emotion be directed to the one existence only. Only all existence. Let me meet you. So I direct my emotions to the existence who has given an opportunity to meet and communicate with you. Are you getting it? Huh? Sometimes my English is not good, so you should interpret yourself. Huh? So, <laughs> so, no, I should 
redirect my emotions emotion is there see so the emotion of attachment is there towards a one person so i redirect that emotion of attachment to the existent i'm let me be attached to the existence let me be attached to the existence that is the word used in Eastern wisdom as Upasana. Upasana literally means sitting nearby. Sitting nearby? Sitting nearby your love. Sitting nearby your existence. Sitting nearby not anyone in time, in space that is constantly changing. If your honey is not a seeker, so don't tell him or her, otherwise they will get upset. Let us understand in a different way. Impression is there, I don't know any impression in my mind that is accumulated. There are reservoir of impressions. From those impressions, the emotions trigger. So there is an emotional reaction. When there is an emotional reaction, I feel it. <clears throat> so when I say I feel it, that feeling is experienced in the mind. Now make it simpler. Past impression they are already deposited, accumulated, present to deeper insight in my unconscious mind. And that is the animal mind. And other impressions are also accumulated since my childhood from the society, culture and education, religion. So now these impressions are mixed with the emotion for survival. That is why we have more psychological problems than animals. Impression mixed up with the emotions of survival. So there is always a sense of feeling of fear, feeling of anger, as opposed to reaction is always there to bring about that change. So we express it by blame, complain. No, at least animals do not have to blame. They fight and whosoever wins and it is done. We carry forward those emotions continuously. We are burning with those emotions. And that is what is known as emotional bondage, emotional dependence. We have to get rid of this emotional dependence. Because it creates an emotional dependence and it prevents the mind to awaken to the real self. We are going slowly. So what is this Upasana? Love for the sake of love. Not love for the sake of some expectations from others, from the time, from the situation, from the event. Think of it. Love for the sake of love. You are in the mood of self-giving. What it takes if you spare love for everyone, including your enemies, what it takes. It expands your mind. But those who are in the blame, complain, reaction game, it will not happen to them. So that is why the first step is the impurities of the mind must go. So method is Upasana. Upasana, I can say simply the love. You are a religious, you love Jesus. Focus on the Jesus. You are Hindu, Krishna, any God and Goddess will do. I will come to that topic. There are Jews, Moses, anyone. Method is Upasana. And that Upasana, love for the sake of love.
Do you still remember the three factors that I talked about? Upasana, that is very practical. In emotional dependence, the mind swings like a pendulum. I have, I like you, but after some time I don't like you. So my mind moves to disliking. And ah, last year I used to meet you, used to, used to give me a pleasure, but this year it used to give me a pain. So mind is moving like a pendulum. So that upasana is that now the mind is steady. Why it is steady? It has a sense of emotional freedom. It does not go with the likes and dislikes. It simply goes with the love. You are living because of the existence. You are born because of the existence. So why should I blame, complain and react against you? You keep your mind totally free. So mind lives in freedom from the projection and the impurities. Ah, now see, look at again, you know, that is what we discovered. For example, we get, we are attached to what it means. You know, sometimes we say love at first sight. How many people have a love for the first sight? And how many times you got frustrated? Ashok, you also had a love at first sight? But you had an errand's marriage. Okay, okay, before that, yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone, you know, I also had it, so it's not a big deal. But this love at the first sight is attachment. So when we have a love at first sight, now ask your what happens to your mind. The mind keeps on thinking about that person. Maybe thinking about that person or a car or a dress, whatever it is. But here, take the person. So, you know, first you had a love at first sight, emotional dependence, expectations, and then the mind keeps on thinking, repeating, 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 repeating. Because of the repetition of the thought, that person becomes a soulmate anesthesia. <laughs> Are you getting it? Your mind says he or she is my soulmate. It is because of repeated thinking, because of emotional dependence. Are you getting it? Think of this. Don't believe. Just, just inquire. Think of this. So this is an attachment. So the whole process is expressed outside dating, soulmate, intense attachment, and then what we say, falling in love, not rising in love. That is why it is emotional dependence. <laughs> that is why we say fall in love. Perhaps those who have coined this phrase, they are right. So pay attention to this. This week, think how many things and people and event you are attached or you have an emotional dependence. The more you think and reflect on it, you will find what has happened to this mind and that is what the projection is. So the three points. I told you last time also, the object of attachment. It may be anything. Object or a, object means a person, a car, a dress, uh, anything. No game, you know, nowadays, uh, the gaming for the kids, uh, they have been addicted. So first, that very attachment is an emotion converts into feeling in the mind. But because I experience some sense of security, some sense of pleasure, so mind says, why not start thinking? So you have a constant thinking and that thinking creates, uh, what do you say? An intense attachment. Then the love at first sight becomes fall in love. Third point is very important. The location. 
where is the location of this intense attachment? No, I'm in love. We, you don't say I'm in love here. You say I'm in love. <laughs> Do you see that? That is the heart. Huh? Did you say anesthesia? I'm in love. Uh, you don't say I'm in love or I'm in love here. You know? Or you don't say I'm in love here. So that location uh, seems to be deeper inside the heart where the mind triggers those emotions. So now then there is a vicious cycle. Uh, we will uh, do it, uh, we will go next time. So what is the decision? I'm thinking it triggers the emotion of emotional dependence. So emotional dependence gives me the feeling inside and then it triggers the thought. So cycle of the thought, feeling and emotion that binds me, that makes me crazy is emotional dependence. We use the three factors in the upasana. We use the three factors, the same three factors. So now think of the object of attachment. Let me get attached to the existence. Now I'm doing it consciously. Falling in love takes place habitually, impulsively, instinctively. But now I'm doing the upasana is to bring all the three factors at the conscious level. I love you because you manifest existence. You are beautiful because the beauty is manifesting through existence in you. Are you getting it? So we are changing the entire thought pattern to trigger a conscious emotional response, not an emotional reaction. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Do you remember? Your kingdom come, your will be done as in earth and heaven. You see that? We embrace the entire existence. I don't want to go into any religion. So we can even use an image. I used to have an image of my master. Now, he represents the existence. Finished. I love him. I love my dad, yes. My guru expresses in my dad. So dad is an epitome of the guru. What I'm doing, last point then we will do the practice. I am trying to bring about a total change in the emotional impulsive reaction that is carried forward by the process of evolution. So as a human being, I can recognize these emotions and can redirect that emotion either to the real self in the beginning, from the beginning, or to any image of the God and goddesses, whatever we like, we love, as a tool. Or, or to the Guru, the way I do it, or to a mantra. Any mantra will do. Om Namah Shivaya will do. Shantoham will do. I am the peace. Peace is the existence. So I see the peace as the infinite space all around, in me and in everyone. That is in brief. We will understand this upasana in a couple of sessions. We will be. We have already started doing the practice. So just close your eyes. Let us start our practice. Eyes are closed, body is, just in line your body, just in line your body.
feel being comfortable. We'll follow this traditional approach and then I'll be adding a <coughs> lot of steps of Upasana until we, we recognize, we find out and we see, yes, here it is. So move the mind on the entire body, on all the joints of the body. What is that joints? So now you see that emotion. We are triggering that emotion. It is not an emotional reaction. It is an emotional response. <coughs> what is that response? It is sensation, comfort, and steadiness in the entire body. That's a feeling I experience. Just remember, it's not very clear in modern psychology, but in Eastern wisdom, it's very much clear. Whatever I consciously experience is my feeling. Re and reaction of the anger then I feel the perspiration, the heart is racing, so that feeling, same way, you see that, see the beauty of this Eastern wisdom that just move the mind once again on the entire body and find out a sense of, you see feeling, sensation, comfort, steadiness. Now, for example, you have a fear. You move the mind again on the body and you move to the experience of sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Again, the mind says fear. You move it. Mind says anger. You move to the sensation, comfort, and steadiness. I can tell you the first two steps can be used in your daily life to manage this emotional reaction. You just, you need not to speak out, you are in anger with me, and then you move your mind, with, even with eyes open. Now you can re really understand why I use the first two steps. Now being carefree thoughts. What did I say? Emotional reaction unconsciously and then love at first sight is attachment at first sight, follows by the thoughts. So now what we are doing? Here we are exploring. Be carefree. The thoughts are coming and going. Let any thought come and go. I am not attached to it. I am separate from it. Are you getting it? I believe so. All are seekers. <clears throat> now I am attaching, you see I'm using the word attaching, I'm attaching all these steps to what we are learning, the Upasana. And for that we should have a right knowledge. I'm not attached to any thought. Why? Every thought that enters into my mind which is unwelcome, uninvited, has to do something with that emotion. The mind at the unconscious level carries some impression of whatever is coming to my mind. Oh, that is why I'm not attached to any thought, so I'm carefree. But down, now, no, I, you see the first three steps completes the upasana. Oh no, let me replace it. That is very important point. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu, Sarvesham swastir bhavatu, Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Let there be a well-being for all. Not focus to any one person, one event or one situation. I'm doing upasana. <clears throat> But please add some emotion and the feeling to it. In the beginning, there may be a dry thinking, but the more and more we do it, we have that thought, let there be a well-being for all.
you get attached to the well-being for all. When you get attached to the well-being for all, it is not an attachment. You attach to one thing. When you attach to everyone, you are attached to the existence that helps you to rise in love. You see another meaning of this mantra? Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Let there be peace for all. Peace! So first there was a clarity that peace is a common factor. Now why, why it is a common factor? Peace is existence. Oh, so let there be peace for all. It means I love peace, means I love existence. Means I am attached to the existence. Yes. So we are asking the mind to get emotional. To have a feeling. No, no, I don't feel peace. No, but feel peace for everyone. Are you getting it? That's a beautiful change. The mind can get it. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu let there be completeness in all. Who is complete? Existence. Who created me? Existence. So if existence is complete and created me, so I am also complete in myself. So everyone is complete in oneself. Then why am I attached to someone? Why I fall in love with someone? Why should I rise in love? See. You know, that knowledge, that input should be there in your thoughts. And that thought one day will trigger a feeling of the love that you have never felt before. Is the goal of Upasana to move the mind from the emotional dependence to the emotional freedom. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Let there be an auspiciousness for all. So we have first three steps, we'll complete that. So now see that to remove the impurities of the mind, the breathing will work. But to remove that emotional bondage and emotional dependence, my friends, Upasana will work. So we go back to this uh, sort of quick, short and gentle breathing through both the nostrils, into the rib case, dropping Om Shanti into the heart and keeping the body steady. Start that. Continue that. But do it with emotion that I'm going to change today. So when you do not find any reaction, emotional reaction, emo mind says, no, I've done enough. Last time it happened that you st one started doing and then you were totally absorbed. You felt that as if you are not doing, but you, the practice was continuing. Yes, you can add that emotional element into that also. Start breathing.
Just continue. Gentle breathing, quick and short breath through both the nostrils. Om Shanti, you keep on dropping. So when you are able to separate, Om Shanti is being dropped gently. Breath continues, second layer, third layer, the body remains steady. The fourth layer, the knowledge of Om Shanti is there. The mind getting absorbed either with the love or into the infinite space. Both are okay. Now stop it, start breathing deep, silent and slow, moving the mind from the crown of the head inside the tailbone, reaching to the tailbone, and singing Om Shanti. <clears throat> You're in love with the real self. Just see, can we trigger that emotion? We follow what we discussed today. <clears throat> One emotion comes, rise unconsciously, what is known as a love at first sight. And the other, by the thought, we arouse the feeling. It creates an emotion. Om Shanti. When you exhale, the mind moves from the tailbone to the crown of the head. I know that it's a big challenge to me to guide uh, this part of the world who has never been to the practice of Upasana.
शांति And leave the ears, Nyasa also. Become aware of the ribcage, the center of the ribcage. Move the mind inside the ribcage into the heart. The seat of the consciousness is the heart of yoga. The heart of yoga is located symbolically exactly at the center of the rib case. You look inside, you become aware of the space. There are two ways of doing it. The triangle is okay. Equilateral triangle pointing upward is a symbol of the highest consciousness. Normally it is a big challenge to the mind to trigger a re or arouse emotion. <clears throat> the other is that whomsoever you love or like, don't tell me, you visualize him or her. The first is begins with what I am, what I have, what I possess belongs to you. You means who? Either to the triangle representing the Shiva or to the person you are visualizing internally with love. What I am, what I have, what I possess belongs to you. Why? To drop ego. What I am, what I have, 
what I possess belongs to you. So what is happening? Three steps, object of attachment, location inside the heart, mantra or a thought. So we have a thought, what I am, what I have, what belong, what I possess, all belongs to you. We'll understand it is known as the dasya bhava. An attitude of I am not. Just to give you a glimpse of what is coming, then we have an emotion of friendship. to that person or to the Shiva. So that friendship is in the mood of caring, sharing. Another stage of upasana is known as an emotional love, or you can say simply the emotional attachment, conscious emotional attachment. And you need not to do it outside, you just do it inside and you will see the change in you, you will also see the change in that person. The fourth stage is known as the Madhur Bhav. It is the love for the sake of love. That is what we were doing in meditation. Now move as you move the mind inside the heart, looking at the triangle, moving inside the center of the triangle, singing Om. Mind seemingly stop shanti. Some people would continue, may like this approach. But here we need an emotional change. Doing nothing, remain as you are. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, 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 
Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down, we'll share our experiences. How are you, Stephen? Uh, good, very good. That was um, it was a, a effortless meditation. Um, very quiet, restful, and I would say I am definitely in peace right now. Wonderful, very good. How are you, Brandy? Good morning. I'm good. Thank you. Um, my meditation was really deep and relaxing. I'm dealing with some allergies, so it got in the way a little bit. But um, other than that, it was, it, when you said you can focus on the space or love, either one, I realized it was just basically the same thing. Space is better than love? No, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Oh, that's really good. That's a good idea. That's a good way. How are you, David and Jerry? Thank you very much. That was um, really good, and I would just I would describe it as very um, in a in space. I was just in a space, and it was extremely peaceful and quiet. Beautiful. So, yes, as uh, Brandy said, love and space both are almost the same thing. When this mind enters into the infinite space, it is basically also manifest the love and that is what we are working on how are you jerry good thank you sir um i i feel similar to what brandy said as well that the space and the love are the same i i kind of feel like um when when i'm saying i am the peace it am i seeing that peace right here in this little little body or am I seeing the peace everywhere? And so I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere, right? yeah. everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. So you see that when I see the peace in my so-called limited to my body, that also triggers emotions. And when I say, for example, uh, when I say Amin and I see the Jesus in my heart, that also triggers the emotion. So in one way, indirectly, it came to my mind, so I'm just using this opportunity. You see, the, the essence of the prayer or the worship in the religion is to trigger those emotions and change those emotions from emotional dependence to emotional free. That is the goal. But then we say, my God is greater than yours. We destroy everything. <laughs> so how are you, Barbara? I'm very good, thank you. Um, the meditation seemed to pass very quickly. When you started chanting, I thought, so soon? I mean, so I just wanted to stay in that meditation. And um, it's very peaceful and very calm. Very peaceful and calm. Very good, wonderful. How are you, Rakesh? Thank you, sir. So it was very deep and uh, very peaceful. Uh, however, uh, right now the emotions were not uh, coming out while I was uh, thinking of Shiva. Yeah. So, so that was the only. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no issue. No issue. Yeah, this question is uh, very important. You know, he he's saying that he is looking at the Shiva, but the emotion is not coming out. What to do? Simple thing to do. Ask your mind whom you love the most. Your honey, see the Shiva there. Emotion will come out. Use that emotion. You love your honey, you love your son, you love anyone, just, just use that. Use that. 
So I love Jesus. I told you last time I went to the Methodist church and, oh, and he said, you know, I said, you know, I see my master there. My master appears in the form of a Jesus there. So what we are looking for, we are looking for an emotional transformation. We don't want to work. We don't want to live with projections all the time. How are you, Vibha? Uh, sir, I'm good. Uh, it was very calm. It was like keeping that mind state that it's on a very free, relaxing, and keeping that mind empty without any dependencies was very calm. Very calm. Yes, yes. That's wonderful. The, I, I will speak later. Anesthesia. Thank you very much. It was very deep. Uh, and for me, uh, it seemed to be a long meditation. Like we are meditating two hours, maybe. Oh. It looked like that. And my window was opened and I heard a lot of sounds. My neighbors, kids, walking, birds, uh, cars, and these sounds, they didn't disturb me. They helped me to be in the flow, to feel uh, the space and yeah, accept yeah. my um, home, my country, my uh, surrounding and me in this uh, like a part of this rock, something like that. Beautiful. That's beautiful. How are you, Rakhi? Uh, Ashok? Namaste, sir. Namaste, sir. Uh, peace and calm. <laughs> Remembering those days when I saw you that letter. Huh? <laughs> Remembering those days when the uh, letter I saw you first was <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. You guided him. I was in deep. He remembered that he has written some letter and then he showed that letter to me. So, yes, yes, yes. I remember. How are you, Sangeeta? I'm still just uh, is attachment to your father or daughter. Ah, yes. Yes, what she's saying, that's really good. And that opens up, that will help you to understand. Uh, she says that she finds uh, my master, and it is also her master, as a relationship uh, of father and the daughter. Father is uh, the master and she is the daughter. You can build any relationship mentally and emotionally. So that, you know, the emotional dependence does not remain there. It should not trigger any uh, emotional reaction. It should not create a limited emotion in our daily life. I think, did I make myself understand? So, how are you, uh, Samir? Sir, it was like uh, uh, it was like surrendering all your thoughts to things. I visualize Gurudev inside me because uh, yeah. in routine I am seeing his photograph. I am worshiping it. Yeah. So it it is very natural to me. Naturally, that image comes to my mind. Yeah. So I, uh, surrendering all my thoughts, my emotions to Gurudev, and that was just relaxing and just. Yeah, All my yeah. problem is to him, everything. Very good. <laughs> the what I am, what I have, what I possess. When we offer everything to the existence or to a representation, it may be a representation of a image of a god and goddess, it may be a representation of a teacher. So the entire journey in one way. Entire journey of the Upasana begins, you know, just start thinking what I am, what I have, what I possess, because there is a sense of emotional clinging to what I am, what I have, what I possess. And that builds our ego. 
it prevents me to enter into a deeper state. So in the beginning, we, we start working what I am, what I have, what I possess during the day. So that is the first stage. Second stage, we build a relationship of friendship. So that friendship should have a pure emotion. You are doing everything mentally. You want to bring about a change in your emotional dependence. Then the third one, then we get emotionally attached. The way we, we find our attachment is very common. After the attachment, the fourth stage comes, which is known as Madhur Bhav. <clears throat> in Bhakti, Madhur Bhav means the love for the sake of love. Love not for the sake of expectation. And that brings about an emotional transformation in our day-to-day -day living. And that means that now this mind is not wandering anywhere. It is not projecting anything. Projection stops, impurities are gone. Then we have to learn the higher text in order to go deeper. That is all for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.